that if you signed up for a three-month trial of Apple Music on day one, it's time to pay up, perhaps. The first wave expires today. Apple will start charging $10 a month for individual plans, $15 a month for family plans, and this comes as Apple Music, iTunes Movies, and iBooks launch today over in China. We've been talking for a while, guys, about what it's going to be like to see this subscription stand on its own legs. John, your thoughts? I am one of those people who signed up on the very first day and immediately turned off automatic renewals because I'm actually, I'm not going to pay 10 bucks a month for this. I don't think I'm a typical consumer, though. Um, most of the songs I listen to, I either own their old songs or I get through uh, Pandora or through XM, Sirius XM Satellite Radio, which has a streaming service. We get that in the car. I use a streaming service. I just don't want to pay another $10 a month. I've got kind of subscription fatigue between Netflix and XM and all the other stuff that wants to charge you nickel and dime you this much here, this much there. Apple month. will say, though, it's not a subscription. It's a membership. It's exclusive. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, but it's interesting, Shelley, because the iTunes International chief told The Guardian that there was a bit of homework to do. They had some work to update the app based on what they what feedback they had gotten from consumers. Tweaks, subtle as so, they may be, do they make a difference? So John just said everything uh, a different way than I would say it. He streams everything. Apple makes a living by downloads. They sell downloads, and that business is going the way of DVDs and CDs. It's over. So in order for Apple to stay music relevant, they're going to have to have a music service. Now, they may have gotten it right. They may have gotten it wrong. It may need to be tweaked. Maybe 10 bucks a month. Tomorrow, they could buy Spotify and Pandora and not know they wrote the check. <laughs> so, so they need to be in this business. Tim Cook is pretty clear. They're going to have you from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed, whether you're 8 or 80, they want you. They want you cradle to grave. They want to be they want you in Apple prison, and music is a part of that strategy. And by the way, if they want to be the dominant player in music, they've got to get streaming right. They don't really have a choice. So the fact that we may not pay for it today, they will either, they're going to figure this out. They have no choice. It also brings us back, John, to this Steve Jobs conversation, how he doesn't like, he never would have liked the stylus. He never would have liked working with a Microsoft or Google, and now he never would have liked having subscriptions to begin with. Steve Jobs was not a genius at everything, and he got music <laughs> terribly wrong the first time. The first time, he was going in the direction of DVDs and DVD burning, didn't build a CD burner into the iMac, said we messed up, then went back and did iTunes. For a long time, he said, we're not going to do subscriptions. People want to own their music. I think I might be the old man who actually does still want to own certain pieces of my music. I'm not saying I'm representative of, of uh, people at large, the millennials, well, like Kayla here. John, John, we need to pay attention to Kayla, not me. Consumers have very clearly demonstrated that they are way more interested in access than ownership now, and the trend is very clear. So they have to get on that bandwagon. I'm, I'm feeling good about it. I don't think I'm going to renew my Apple. Uh, in fact, I can say out loud to the world, I'm not doing it. But <laughs> at some point, they will get me back if it's easy. And one of the things Apple does great is make life frictionless. To the level that they can make music subscription frictionless, all good. If they can't, uh... <laughs> uh, We'll talk more about that and what that means later on, I'm sure. In the meantime, the first Model X from Tesla has been delivered. The SUV costs $132,000 minimum to get your hands on one. Elon Musk estimates the company has about 25,000 pre-orders. But it will take 8 to 12 months to deliver a car to anyone who's pre-ordering now. Shares of Tesla having a decent morning and a pretty good tape, of course, the Dow up 200 points or so. Uh, a lot of attention to the design. First off, I was wrong, Carl. I was wrong about? on the Falcon wing doors. Yesterday, my quip about garages, Phil LeBeau has oh, set me straight. the engineering of these yes, doors? Yes, the sensors on them, they're not going to bump into anything. Even the pole in my garage, the kids will be able to get into the car in the wintertime. Elon Musk, of course, has thought of everything. If he could colonize Mars, he can certainly get my kids into the car. I should have known. I like the fact that the audience applauded the doors the way they applauded the lanyard on the iPod <laughs> back in the day. So to me, this was like theatrical and awesome. The most important thing that happened with this Tesla launch is what happened in Silicon, what's happening in Silicon Valley. If you look at what Google's doing, doing with driverless cars, if you're looking what Tesla's doing, looking closely at what Tesla's doing with electric cars, and then you look a little bit to the east, you notice Detroit is sitting on its hands. And I gotta wonder, like, this is fascinating to me. There's, there's a, this fantastic um, ins inspirational innovation going on in Silicon Valley. Whether they have it right or wrong, whether the car's too expensive or not too expensive, I don't know. 
But I'm wondering where the guys who are selling cars are. This is so reminiscent of the old railroad story. That they weren't in the railroad business, they were in the transportation business. The guys who are in the car business feel like they're in the car business, and Silicon Valley feels like they're in the let's get it done in the future business. Well, I don't think GM would have a very easy sell to its shareholders saying we're going to have a car three years from now that's still then going to take eight to 12 months to deliver. I mean, this thing was promised late 2013. Detroit couldn't get away with that. Um, I, I don't know the answer to that be, if it was this clientele, right? Because this group, it's a lifestyle choice, not a transportation choice. They're saying, I want a $132,000 crossover SUV that's electric. That is a very specific client, <laughs> somewhat different than, let's say, me, yeah. who's yeah. going to go, wow, I'm, this car, that car, I don't oh, know. If oh, I, well, I mean, there's a lot of debate today about whether Detroit is beginning to realize that their future is... In, it's happening in Silicon Valley, not where they are. I'm trying to think, the biggest innovation in cars would be, what, a, uh, an aluminum F-150? I mean, but they have to sell cars to people who need them today, right? And who don't have a charging station at home. Detroit has to sell specific cars. The F-150 is a very interesting thing. They can sell all the Ford Focuses they can make. They don't make enough money on them. You sell an F-150, you, you make a living. You sell Escalades, you're making money. You sell Cadillacs, not so much. So they have a different set of problems, to be sure. But my question is, Innovation, inspiration, focused right now in this quarter. But the danger, the danger is that Silicon Valley is is making cars for people who will never really exist in mass, right? It's the Bell Lab Xerox Park danger of boy, those are great innovations. Who are you gonna sell them to? Hundred thirty thousand dollars? Yeah, there are a few people around here who can look at that and say, yeah, I'm gonna do it. But for most people, that's eight to ten cars, not one. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with that statement. But again. Somebody somewhere has to say it's, it's a world where energy is important, where climate change is important, where innovation is important, where self-driving cars for safety are important. So I would love to see more of that coming from the guys who are in incumbent. Yeah. You know, it just makes sense. Of course, could GM buy Tesla? I'll just sit here and say. <laughs> Could Tesla um, buy GM? Yeah, that's, uh, always, that's, 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 that's a question. question. I was waiting for you to say that. <laughs> Shelly, it's always good to see you. Thank you, Thank you Shelly Palmer, joining us today.